Hi everyone, this is Yusai. Welcome to another edition of Let's Talk. And this week, my guest ranges from fashion photographers to editor in chief of Interview Magazine, and executive pastry chef working at one of the most renowned restaurants in New York City. But we're going to start out this week with a celebration. Well, Olivia Copel, the new Sports Illustrated Swimsuit 2020 cover model. Hello, Olivia. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Well, thank you for joining me. Where are you right now, by the way? I'm in Charlotte, actually, which is not where I live. I usually live in LA. My boyfriend lives here, so I'm just visiting. Wow, well, so yeah. you've been traveling. You've been traveling through this time. Yeah, I have been. I mean, not, I've been traveling responsibly, but just, just a little bit here and there. Nothing too crazy, but just to um, see family, really. Like, I'm going to Rhode Island tomorrow to see my family. I haven't seen them in so long, so it's good. Excellent. Well, today is a special day because last week it was an announcement of Sports Illustrated 2020 swimsuit cover. And I know that you and I know each other for a long time. This has always been on your bucket list. But before we jump into that, I want people to get to know you a little bit better about a little bit of journey that what took you to the cover of the magazine. So we know that you started out in, in beauty pageant and winning Miss Universe in 2012. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about that. What encouraged you to enter the pageant and, and what was it like going through that process? It was really random. So I was at Boston University. I was studying actually acting and communications in college. And I had always kind of hated school, to be honest with you. I really wanted to get out. And I looked at a lot of people who had started their careers in pageants, funny enough, like um, Maria Menounos, Juliana Rancic, like all these people that at the time I really thought were, I really emulate, I wanted to emulate and I thought were just absolutely incredible, especially funny enough, Maria Menounos is like from where I'm, the area that I grew up in. So I kind of felt like if they had done it and helped them with their stage presence and all of these things, maybe I should try to do it too. So I entered Miss Rhode Island. My parents were so shocked. They hated it. They were just like, Olivia, why would you ever do this? You should do Miss America. At least you can like play the cello and you'll have a talent. Um, they thought it was just the absolute most narcissistic thing I could come up with. <laughs> but so anyway, I started really training for, for Miss Rhode Island and then I ended up winning. My parents were like in sweatpants. They did not want to be there. They were like ashamed to be at this pageant. I won Miss Rhode Island. I won Miss USA and I won Miss Universe all within two years. So eventually they like came around. But it was a very interesting time in my life because it taught me a lot of lessons, obviously. And it also showed me that um, you should always just like, you know, you follow your gut, go for what you want to go for. Because if I had listened to even my own parents, they would have been like, don't do this. It's a terrible idea. Um, and I probably wouldn't be, I, I don't know where I would be, but I know that it wouldn't have opened up the doors in the way that it, that everything has. So that was awesome. Do you think your parents were against it because they were worrying about you being stereotyped as a beauty queen and they would actually hinder your career path? What was it about it that they were so against in the beginning? I think that, well, I grew up with a very, everybody in my very musical family. I grew up playing the cello. So my mom's a professional musician. My dad also was a professional musician. So they have this like level of like expectation what they would think like for, I guess, like a performance. Like they just didn't quite understand the concept of a beauty pageant because they just grew up with like performing classical music. So it's, it's not that they were particularly judgmental. It just wasn't in their wheelhouse. And they thought of it as wasting my talent as like playing a ch as a cellist. They thought because... I was in the wrong passion to go for. <laughs> well, did you prove them wrong? I know. Funny enough, they came around. It took a few years, but they at, Miss, at, at all the other like stepping stones, they were they've been so supportive and they were so proud and they still joke around like, "Don't listen to me. I don't know anything." <laughs> Well, what's interesting what you said is that there's a process of training. I think a lot of people don't realize that. Yes, there's a stigma with pageants, but there is a part of the pageantry that you do have to really train and, and build that self-confidence because at the end of the day, you are putting yourself in a placement for judgment. What was that like for you as a young woman at the time? I think that it's all, first of all, that is very true. You're definitely putting yourself up for a lot of criticism, but I personally believe that pageants are your journey within anything is all relative and it's just about 
training to become the best version of yourself. So being as eloquent as you possibly can, as in shape as you possibly can, feeling as confident as you can. Like these are all valuable tools to have, not to win a beauty pageant, but just to succeed in life. Being really up to date on current events, um, being able to feel confident if you're asked an absolutely random question, um, being knowledgeable, knowing how you feel about certain things. Like there were a lot of aspects of the pageant that I, that I loved, but it had nothing to do with winning. I never anticipated winning at all. Um, but it was more just having those tools that would help me succeed in whatever I decided to do. So I don't know if that answers that question, but. Absolutely. And I love that you touch on three things. That is the mental process, the physical process, and, the, and, and also the inner strength. And I think that's something that, that we definitely understand because we know each other for so long and not far different than shooting for Sports Illustrated. The journey there, I felt like that was truly a foundation for you to build that growth and be able to then they, and be able to actually to come through in front of the lens. Because we talk about these shoots a lot. People ask me as a photographer, how do I prepare for a Sports Illustrated shoot? Well, one way is being a pageant. One way is put yourself out there to, to take chances because it's not like you're gonna show up on set all of a sudden it clicks. Our relationship working together, I saw you grown and it's incredible to see that growth. And, and most of it truly that I think people need to know is internal growth because that Totally, like, well, yeah, 100%. And that's why I have an affinity still for pageants as well, because people think of it as being one thing that's maybe very, very narcissistic or very, I guess, even um, sexualizing a, a body or whatnot. But it, it's so much more than that, exactly what you're saying. I think at this point, we all understand that beauty is in, is in the confidence you carry within, no matter what shape you are, no matter what color you are, all of that is something that exudes from inside of you. And it's something that it's like a muscle that I think you have to strengthen um, and everybody should and has to kind of like work at strengthening exactly what you're saying. So I think any opportunity that you have to like put yourself out there, whether it's a pageant or a very difficult job or a milestone that you, that you will not say no, you will not take no for an answer toward like that type of self, um, it's just so self-fulfilling and you gain a confidence that will, that will definitely transcend into anything in your life. Um, I could not agree more. Like showing up in front of the camera, confident is what makes you become beautiful in the photos. Absolutely. And the journey is so important because everybody come from a different place. And I mean, me as an immigrant who never thought would be the photographer holding a camera, shooting somebody like you, who has millions of followers and have so many millions of people really listening to what you want to tell them, what confidence you can build with them. I've been watching you and I'm so proud of you that you're sharing so much of you openly in the good days and the bad days. And I think that is so important, especially in the realm of social media now that, that it's easy to put out a facade, but I love it when you share those days, you're like, this is a hard day. This is not an easy day. Those are the moments that, that I feel like people really can connect with you because you are absolutely beautiful and at times, it could be quite intimidating, even for a photographer like me, because catching, <laughs> catching beauty is one thing, right? And, and, but capturing that authentic moment of the model, celebrity, whoever the subject matter is, we all know what you look like. And everybody can take a beautiful picture of you. But who can capture the true essence of you? It's what I make myself most proud of when I get to work with you. Oh, thanks. Well, that means a lot. If I can intimidate you, then that's a whole other milestone. I've achieved. <laughs> well, I love you saying milestones. What are the pivotal milestones that when you were younger as a little girl that, that you set and, and have achieved? We obviously know we have three crowns already. Three, <laughs> and, and now we just landed another milestone on the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit cover. What, what was it that in you that you wanted to hit that, that moment to be on that cover? I know you worked for it for a very long time, but what was it about Sports Illustrated that made you want to be there? I know I did have that on my mind for a very long time. For me, it always went back to wanting to be surrounded by women that I was in awe of. Like everybody who's ever been a part of that family, everybody particularly who's ever like graced the cover. I mean like Tyra Banks, Heidi Klum, Chrissy Teigen, all of these, um, Kathy Ireland, I could go, Chrissy Brinkley, all these women who there's so much more than a pretty face and they are entrepreneurs. They've created opportunities for so many other women. They've paved the path for so 
so many other women. So for me, it was just really, I was just, I mean, to be able to be considered in that even like stratosphere to me is what Sports Illustrated, Sports Illustrated cover or even just being a part of the family has always meant to me. That's why I like, just, I, that's why I regarded it so highly my whole life because I felt like it was, it was, it kind of represented the kind of woman that I've always like dreamed to be. Um, so I mean, I'm still in awe of, of all of those women. Oh my God, if I could have just like a little ounce of their success, I will be so happy. <laughs> Oh, you're already there. That's the great thing about Sports Illustrated that we have seen it evolve over time as well. I know you create a vision board. You have amazing models on that board. You know, in the very beginning of the, the decades and decades ago, Sports Illustrated was really just celebrating beautiful women for a lot of men to watch, an audience of sports fans. But in the last 10 years with, with MJ Day, our great friend, being the editor-in-chief, have really changed the conversation about how do we celebrate women. And as a photographer, I change and evolve with it as well. I mean, you saw that in my work and you saw how we work with each other as well. I think that's really important note that we should touch up on because you have been in the industry and you know how hard it can be. And I often think beautiful women have more difficult time to reach where they want to be. Oh, really? Well, I, yeah, yeah. No, well, I can't speak for anybody else, but I, yeah, I get rejected all the time. I just did that. I was feeling so excited about this opportunity and they said no it happens all the time and you just you're just not right for everything but that doesn't mean that everything's right for you like you kind of have to find your niche and I think now more than ever we're also learning the importance of kind of just like honing our niche and you might not be able to convince somebody else that you're supposed to be um, accepted by them but if you just don't take no for an answer I, I that's why I really believe like you'll get there you will get the respect that you're yearning for. It's just a matter of whether or not you hold on to that belief in yourself. It's only a matter of how others catch on. And I think you're right. And a lot of times that people say no, I, always, I often tell people that don't think that no is a definitive no or it's no at that moment. But a minute later, you could change their mind or two minutes later, however long that may be. Because so I never think a no is a door closed nor just a chapter. And you can really open that chapter when you feel like you're more ready. And I think it's very evident with your career. You went on acting, you've done so many different collaborations with different people. And, and being part of Franchise Sports Illustrated, you were being watched the whole time. They were seeing you grow. And I know when MJ decided to put you in a magazine, it was at the right time for you. Because I remember we were on set together one day. I was shooting a talent. You can happen to visit. You're like, you sigh. I would love, love to be in Sports Illustrated. I would love for MJ to know me. And I, and I remember saying to you, I go, in time, when you're ready. And that's really important for other girls and women out there that are listening, because it's not just you want to be somewhere, you gotta be ready to be there. Because let's talk about being on the shoe. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of pressure. And like, I think you have to be in line with what you want to. Like, if you're not feeling, I think everybody deep down can always feel if they're like, very much connected to a goal that they have. And then when they get it, it's kind of like, I've been preparing for this day in and day out, mentally, physically, all the things like, that's when you feel like you've really like earned and, and been in line with what you want. So that's why it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of like mental power too. Like if you're really trying to get in line with these, these goals, they, they are out of touch right where you are. Like five years ago, I had so, or 10 years ago, I had so many goals, like they were intangible. They were so out of, out of this world. But um, as long as you hold on to that little sliver of hope and just, it will grow and it will compound into something that's actually believable. But you have to believe it first, hokey as it sounds. Well, one thing about the women that share the cover with you and having individual cover is so special because that's the very first time Sports Illustrated has ever done that. And what was it like to be able to see your good friends? You have Jasmine on one side and Kate Bach on the other. And Kate's been with the franchise for almost 10 years. And, and, and Jasmine, you guys are very close. Was that, did, did that feel so special to you to see that you get to share this moment with them? Yes. And at the time of shooting, we didn't know at all that that was a cover, sh a cover shoot at all. We had no idea. So we were, it was golden hour, it was the most beautiful part of time of the day. We were on such a gorgeous beach. Obviously we all have such a great relationship with one another. We were so, we're genuinely close friends. So 
sharing that with one another in itself was so fun, but then also finding out that that actually ended up being on the cover. I mean, that just, that really just blew our minds. <laughs> well, what's so special for me is that a lot of people don't realize out there, they think I'm going to show up, I'm going to shoot the cover. In fact, I haven't shot that many covers. I last cover I shot was Kate Upton in Fiji. Uh, she had a triple cover. And this cover is so special because it's quadruple cover. So, so I don't know what's going to be next. But for me, is that um, a lot of people have always asked, do you know that the cover is happening? I've been on nine trips with Sports Illustrated in the last decade, and more than that. 14 trips so some days, some years, I take two or three trips. I never know when the cover is going to be. But somewhere in my heart, you know when the lighting's right, you when the model's ready, and we give that a best try we can. And I remember on that beach, three of you guys were just having a great time. And I looked over, I go, oh my God, girls, let's get serious for one moment. And you guys looked at me, and you guys just ran for the beach, and I have a picture of it on my phone. You were just running to the beach somehow you guys just knew that was a moment that you need to capture. And what I love the most is that you guys were holding each other's hands. Those moments were not pose moments. You guys can see it on, in, you can see on all the behind the scene photos. Uh, it was just so organic to see that Jasmine was right there where she needed to be. You were there celebrating with them. And, and, and one of the things I want to point out for, for other viewers to know the confidence you have on us that was so incredible is that you were one of the shorter girls. Oh you know? yeah. And I we were like, Olivia, stand like you're 10 feet tall. I don't want you to stand. I want you to stand. Remember, I keep screaming, stand like you're a giant. I know. Well, that's funny. I actually forgot about that because when you look at the cover, you would never notice that I am. I'm like a whole foot taller than Kate. And I think that's those are the moments that people don't realize. And when we look at that picture, how incredibly balanced it was. You know, for me, having you on there on the side and, 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 and you did stand 10 feet tall in your spirit and your beauty and you hold your own. And that's what's so important for me as a photographer for Sports Illustrated, right? I want Hunter McGrady to celebrate her, her size of who she is and most confident she can be when she shows up. And for three of you, with Jasmine, Kate, and you, I wanted to make sure that moment was so special. And funny enough, I got to tell you, to be honest, even though we did that cover try, I wasn't done. That wasn't a moment I thought we were done. Remember when everybody's ready to walk away and I said, wait, hold on, guys, stop. And I had three of you standing on the sand. I go, wait for a second. Just wait here for a second. Let's calm all the energy down. Then we shot that double page inside the magazine. Yes. I have chills with that picture because that to me, it's timeless. It's so raw. It was the synergy of three of you together and connected. It wasn't about, is this going to be a cover? It was just love, you know? Yeah. Yes, it was. So that was like, I felt like we were creating art there, especially when we tried it in the black and white. I don't know if you remember that, but it was like, it was just so, it just felt like, I don't know. Yeah, I think it felt very special. Even, there are also so many photos, by the way, that also never end up seeing the light of day, but like, you remember seeing behind the scenes and on the monitor that are either like hilarious or they're just like the perfect moment. You don't end up making it, but they're still like, it's so special to be able to create that. It's, it's so like just rewarding. It's wow. Ha having that check off of your bucket list, what are the other things on that list that you can give us a little peek into and see what we can do to help you get there? Oh my gosh. I, I have a lot of, I have a lot of goals. I think that the thing that I try to do also, which like I feel like everybody should try to do is like enjoy where you are, enjoy the success and like don't always constantly be looking for more because I can definitely fall into the habit of that. So try and take a step back, value the things that are really important. But then also, I do also feel a responsibility and a real joy in the idea that I get to inspire other people, especially young women. So that's a part of like my continued success that for me really does drive me and like keeps me going. Um, I love the idea of becoming more involved in the business side of everything. Um, and then also I have a lot of film projects that are coming out as well. Um, but like, I think going forward, I also, I really want to try to become like the best businesswoman that I can. I think that that would be fun for me. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I, I love that you capped all that with I hope it's fun for me. And that is so important because just because you want to make money or be famous, it doesn't make you a happy person. And life is so incredibly short as we know it, that we need to celebrate and, and, and be, be present. And that is such a valuable lesson you're teaching us right now. It's just really living a present because 
We don't. We don't take the time to say, hey, Olivia, thank you. You know, we don't take enough time for that because, and truly, I, I, I'm so happy you're here on the show because we do these shoots and some days are just business. You do the work and you leave and you get to see the picture. You're so excited, but you forget to say, thank you, John Ruggiero, for the amazing hair. Thank you, Tracy, for the amazing makeup. And thank you for the weather and the production because we yeah. don't, we, cause, because it is three months later, this time is eight months later, right? And, and, we do. We we uh, doing this during this difficult time. I think I have learned so much about accountability, my own accountability, and and at the same time, I encourage other to not just call people out in a negative of accountability, but keep them accountable when they're doing positive things. You know, say, let them know you are beautiful, or you done what you done, and little my may seem to be a changing amazing things in other people's life and I think that's what you're doing when I get to see you celebrate your birthday a couple of weeks ago I felt like I was with you and I'm so sad I can't be there with you because that cake looks so good <laughs> it was so good <laughs> well I, I I think it's it's incredible what you're doing and it's one of the things that you've been working on is more than a mask let's talk about that what is that about and what encouraged you to do so so more than mask is a company that i started over quarantine i was basically trying to figure out how i could in some way help the situation that was going on and i honestly selfishly felt like i wanted to do it for myself too because i felt guilty i felt like so many people were suffering around the world and i just wanted to know that if i was doing the smallest thing it mattered um so i didn't really have any i didn't exactly know what i was going to do I didn't know if it was gonna be big or small, but I was shooting for the stars and I was like, you know what? I wanna come up with something that makes sense for me. So let's think fashion. I'm gonna kind of incorporate fashion with masks. And then I decided that also I was going to partner with, a, with an organization that would be able to provide the most relief to people during that time. And I figured out that hunger is one of the hugest problems with COVID because people are obviously working less and there's already people in poverty, obviously, but this is just like 10, this is double whammy. So I decided to partner with Feeding America. So one mask provides 100 meals. So one mask, so like this is just a passion project. Obviously nobody's getting like any, this is not a money making thing for anybody, um, but they're at sale at Express right now. And they are literally, you're, you're providing 100 meals through one mask purchase. And I think they're really cute. So you're protecting yourself, you're giving back, and um, you're also looking great. <laughs> well, I, I love that. And you have lots of other friends like Devin Windsor who's doing products. And I feel like you guys really do celebrate together and help each other. That's such a commodity that, that, that the collaboration and helping women with each other to grow is so incredible to watch. You have to, because at the end of the day, we're only, we're only raising the tide for everyone. Like everybody deserves the opportunity to grow and be the best that they're supposed to be, the, to reach their potential. And in that potential, they're also paving a way for you. So I know that it's not really just about doing it because it will also help you, but like when you really think about it, first of all, it's the right thing to do because it's just being a good friend. And second of all, it really is creating more opportunity for everyone when you shed light and, and see more success within women, particularly. Um, yeah. And I also believe like, like we were just saying, if life wasn't fun, then if your job isn't fun, then don't do it. If, if what you're doing isn't fun, then don't do it. Celebrating success, celebrating anything, supporting anybody and cheering them on. That's fun. Like that's fun. It's a fun thing to do. So I also feel like that part of it for me too is rewarding because I get to like, I get to share part of the joy of my friend's success. Like we get to celebrate and like be excited together. It's nice. I mean, four covers, how can you not throw a biggest party when we can get together again? <laughs> I'm counting on that amazing party. I'm counting on all the three ladies can get back together in one place that we can all celebrate because that's one thing I do miss. I miss the opportunity to be able to be with you girls. And um, any other year that we always have a launch party and the launch party, there's always amazing model who comes and, and aspiring models will come to a launch and to meet you guys. And they have the opportunity to learn about your journey and be able to grow from it and be inspired for you ladies so I'm so glad that it's a social media platform that you guys are out there still champion woman positivity because 
we need that so we we so need that right in the last five years we begin to see the tie rising with the women together with really empowering each other that's nothing like that 100 years ago 50 20 years ago so i'm i'm proud to be part of the franchise and i'm proud to be that the frequently the only men in the room <laughs> sports <laughs> illustrated oh you usually are they're like who's that guy in the tub with olivia it's like oh don't worry it's totally fine. <laughs> you know, I, I do think that from watching the behind the scenes videos and stuff you have posted for guys who are watching out there, it is true. The trip that we do, we are so blessed and so lucky and so privileged to have this opportunity to travel around the world and create amazing imagery. But along the way, we do try to bring joy and laughter with each other. And and yeah. because I have to say, it is intense. A, a lot, you know, the guys you guys don't know out there is that the ladies are out there first thing in the morning. They walk, they wake up hours ahead before me. You know, they get their hair and makeup done. They get it, they get fed at three in the morning as their breakfast, and they're working all day. And sometimes, I don't feed them <laughs> because I get so into working. I forgot it's lunchtime. <laughs> yeah, no. If the light is right, you gotta keep going. Well, I'm looking forward to see what's next for you. Whether it's it's more than a mask or a recent project that you have collaborated with, with eyewear. Oh, yes. So I have a collaboration with Privé Revo, which I was excited about because their price point is amazing. Every pair of glasses is $39.95. I designed every single one, and they are so cute. And another thing that's really cool is for every sunglass purchased, a pair of glasses will be given to somebody in need. So you buy a pair of sunglasses and you give one to someone in need. So there was like this awesome charitable angle that we were allowed to add to it, which was very timely just given the world right now. So that was good too. Well, you're all about paving forward. I absolutely love that. Absolutely love that. What film project you have coming up? What can we see? What's next? What's next? We have the bucket list. Keep checking them off. Olivia is unstoppable. What's the next most exciting thing that we can be wishing to see? Well, thank you. I do have, I have a show series coming out called Paradise City. And then I have a movie called Venus as a Boy, which is very, Venus as a Boy is an indie film, very interesting. And it touches on some racial issues that are going on today. So I'm very excited about that film. And then Swing of Things is another project that um, is also coming out. And that's with Luke Wilson and Court Overstreet. And it's a Comedy. I don't know if I said that, sorry, but yeah. Amazing, well, I can't wait to see those things. Well, Olivia, I do have a couple of questions that people have DM me and want me to make sure I ask. And that okay. is what, what advice would you give to young girls who's been, who, who wants to, to follow your footstep and, and reach stardom? Oh, well, I feel like everybody should just trust in their unique path first and foremost, because I don't consider like, like success is not necessarily being famous. Success is being happy. So you have to understand that your unique path is your unique path. And you just have to feel what's right within yourself and follow that. And wherever it takes you is where you're supposed to be, if you really do believe that. But also, like, I think finding that inner voice can be hard. So a few of the things that I've always done since I was very little, I wake up every day. I used to wake up every single day and journal every single day religiously every single morning. That was when I was really trying to figure out like my next steps and what I needed to do. And that was when I was like in college and I hated college. Um, and then I would say meditate, pray on, pray for answers. Like I kind of believe in all of that type of spiritual guidance. We don't have all of the answers, but somewhere inside of us, we do. If you really just ask for that, which I feel like, again, that sounds a little hokey, but it's what I believe. I love that answer. What was your biggest fear when you were young? Have you overcome them? I hate spiders. Still a big fear. Uh, oh, no, but real. I, uh, I guess that I've overcome the fear of having to be perfect. That's something that I think I've noticed with a lot of women, especially a lot of my friends, to be honest with you, because a while ago, well, actually not too long ago, the idea of being like a model, like I, for example, would have had to have been four feet taller. I would have had to be like sick thin. Like, I feel like we're a lot more appreciative of the things that make us different now. And we allow ourselves to actually be human. Whereas before, especially in this industry, I think we had to only allow ourselves to look like a sick thin model that's six feet tall. Like, 
now they're, they're so much more open-mindedness that I really value. And I'm not afraid of not being perfect, whatever that I, is. It's absolutely amazing, especially doing social media press, <laughs> the presence of social media that we are constantly being judged. And when you put your stuff out there, somebody will always have something negative to say. Well, <laughs> and I just encourage other people out there, be kind through this time with everyone. You have nothing nice to say. Don't say anything at all. And that's a, advice from Bambi's mom. From, <laughs> you know, you have nothing. That, oh, it's actually not Bambi. It's, it's Thumper's mom. Thumper's mom, <laughs> that's right. And you know, it, 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 that, that's so beautiful. And thank you so much for that. And last question I have for you is that, what would you tell your younger self today? Um, I would tell my younger self that it's all going to work out. Cause I think that I believe in like little tests that you have when you're trying to reach a goal. And when I look back, there were like so many moments where I could have just been like, this isn't happening for me. This is terrible, throw in the towel. That's to be considered a test. And we all have those tests, every single one of us. And it's in those moments that are really hard that we decide our fate. We either decide to like go for it or we decide this is too hard and we give up. But when you give up, you lose your chance at all, uh, completely. So I would say just like, that's what I would tell myself, keep going, which um, I have to keep, we all have to continue to tell ourselves that. Sometimes it's easy to just like not take that next, next step because it seems too hard. So. Don't do that, everyone watching. Don't do that. Keep I going. love that advice. And that's not just for a 16-year-old. I think it's for all of us because we, we are at that time that we kind of all have us on the starting block all over again and trying to figure out what the next step that's best for all of us. But I do encourage everybody that I love that advice Olivia just gave that don't give up. But one thing I do think that instead of trying to run off that starting block by yourself, Grab onto your friends, grab on the people you love around you, your family, and, and take them with you, like Olivia did on the cover of Sports Illustrated, celebrating the amazing cover with two amazing friends. I'm so proud to be that photographer for you. I'm so proud to be part of your journey. Thank you. I'm so proud that you were the one to shoot it. That was, I mean, I was already so ecstatic that you were going to be my photographer for that trip. Never mind now it's the cover. I mean, I can't even believe that. Well, for the record, I did not know it was so special, what an amazing moment, and seeing four covers being part of the history. And most importantly, as a photographer, I'm just there really to celebrate you ladies, right? I'm there to celebrate your confidence that where you have found within yourself and, and inclusivity of different sizes and age. I love seeing Kathy in a magazine that's 55 years old and champion with her beauty from inside out. And then seeing Brielle who owns her, her size and her skin color, I mean, all of it. It's such a poignant time for us to pick up the magazine, to look at each other and go, this is what the world should be. This is what the color spectrum we all have. And this is the size we have and also the ages and we celebrate them all together. And we get a glimpse of Olivia in it. And that's a joy of its own. Thank you. Well, yeah. thank you, Olivia, for being here with me. Thank you so much. Um, I will be watching Let's Talk all week, everybody else. I hope you will be watching as well. <laughs> all well, the time. <laughs> well, thank you. And have a nice, safe travel. And I know how family is so important to you. I see them on Instagram. Give them big hugs for me. And I can't wait to meet them. So we can together celebrate these covers together. Really, I will. can't wait to see you and celebrate. I really can. I hope that's soon. Sooner than you think. Bye-bye. Bye, thanks, you guys. So that's the ever graceful, beautiful, paving for Olivia Coppo. I am so happy and honored to have shot her cover. This is her first cover, and I have a feeling it may not be her last. And I am so glad that I can be part of the Sports Illustrated franchise to really celebrate women in all sizes, inclusivity, with age and color. That's such a blessing, especially during this time that we all really need to into the mirror and look at what is around us and celebrate our friends. So next time you're getting ready to get up on that starting block to run, don't forget, it's no fun running by yourself. Grab a friend, grab a loved one and run together. And I hope you guys stay out. I hope you guys stay safe out there. Thank you so much for joining me right now and I will see you again tomorrow.